Hey guys, it's Lucinda from the Boho Suitcase and today I'm going to show you how I make my little golden book junk journals that you see in my shop. These are the supplies and tools that you are going to need. I will pop a list in the description box down below. These are just the tools that I regularly use, but you may be able to find alternatives within your household as well. So the first step is to pull apart the little golden book and I normally do this by trying to pull the back cover just very slowly because that's where the back of the staples are. And now I'm just using, it's a die pick tool and I'm using the, just the flat edge just to flatten out the staples to try and get the pages off nice and cleanly. And you should have two separate groups of pages, they'll come apart pretty easy. So the next step is to just cut down the spine so there's just a little bit of paper in between and I just cut down there just to separate the two, page, the two back and front covers. I'm now just cutting down the spine itself because it's quite weak so I don't want to include that with my actual covers so I'm just chopping that off. There's like a little ridge that you can cut along. I'm now just using a baby wipe to just clean off any uh, dirt or grime off the front and back covers. Sometimes these books obviously are second hand so they have a little bit of um, like pencil marks or dirt or whatever it might be. So I'm just giving it a quick clean just to make sure I get any of that off. The next step is to put the book corners on. I like doing this prior so that I've got my cover all sorted. So I've got four book corners here and just some E6000 glue and I'm just popping a little tiny uh, dot on the corner and then just smearing it with the book corner and pushing it down. And then I'm just using that baby wipe I used to clean the pages and squish it down with a pair of jewelry pliers. This is just, um, I'm using the baby wipes so that the um, jewelry pliers don't kind of dent the um, book corners. And a little bit of glue goes a very, very long way, especially this particular glue. So don't put too much on because it will dry on the cover and you'll be able to see it. So I just use a very, very tiny dot. So I've done the front cover, now I'm doing the back cover. So the next step is to cut a spine for our, our journal. So I'm just measuring up, it's about 20 centimeters or eight inches. So I'm just measuring that out so that I've got the right height and then I'm going five centimeters wide or two inches. And what I've got here is just a piece of mount board, um, but just like a thick um, cardboard will work as well. So I'm just measuring out um, the spine. I'm actually doing two because I'm gonna glue them together just to make it a little bit thicker. Just using my ruler and a Stanley knife just to chop those down. And I'm just checking that they're the right height. Now I'm going to use just some tacky craft glue and some washi tape to secure these together. So I'm just putting some glue on one side, spreading it out. You could use a paintbrush, I'm just using the scraps of the spine from the book. So just spread it out and then just pop them together, sandwich them together. And I like to just add a little bit of washi tape um, top and bottom just to hold it together for the meantime while it dries but also just as a security. And I would recommend just using like a lighter coloured washi tape if you're going to use washi tape because it may show through underneath the fabric that we're going to pop on top of it if it's too bright. So the next step is to work out how much fabric I need. So I'm just measuring up, I'm 
thinking I'm probably going to need about eight centimeters wide and then double the height. So I've just got a, um, a large bit of fabric here and I'm just folding it over so that I've got the right width. So I'm actually going to go nine centimeters just to give me a little bit of extra room and I'm using a rotary cutter to cut my fabric. Now I have had a minor incident in the last couple of months where I've actually had to require three stitches because I was using the rotary cutter so just be really really careful. So I've cut about double the amount that I need but I'm just measuring up here and just checking that it is going to fold all the way around. And I'm just chopping off the excess there. So I'm just popping down an extra craft mat because this is the one that I get glue on all the time. And then I'm just measuring it out. And what you want to do is have like a little tiny gap between where the cover meets and where the spine meets. And I'm just using that same craft glue and smearing that on the spine first. I like to glue this down first so that I've actually got a bit of a um, guide as to where things go. And then I'm just very carefully putting a little bit of tacky glue on the edge of each book cover. I'm just checking that the fabric's glued and adhered and it's not covering up anything that I don't want it to. And I'm just cleaning up some glue that I've spilt. So now we're going to do the same thing just on the back side just so that we can secure all the fabric down. I find this glue is really, really good for um, gluing everything down especially fabric. I'm just cleaning up any excess glue as well and just chopping off any excess material because you can use that for tabs as well in your journal. So I'm just smoothing it down, making sure that everything's sticking and then I'm just going to sit this to the side and work on the pages. So I've got my pages here that I've pulled out of my journal. doing is I'm just checking how wide they are so you will need to chop, chop a little bit top and bottom off the pages and a little bit off one side so I've got my paper trimmer here but you could use scissors or a Stanley knife and a ruler and I'm just actually eyeballing it a little bit um, just to kind of make sure that I'm getting that right so it's about half a centimeter by the looks of and then I'm kind of going um, the same width kind of top and bottom and I'm just using the um, one that I've already cut to cut the bottom stack as well. So now to get the pages to fit um, within the same order, I'm actually just folding these pages. So I've folded it along the spine and then kind of concertina folding it so that it's um, sitting in between so I can glue it down. So I fold the spine over where it naturally creases, then fold in and then fold out. And I'm doing that with every page. So fold over where the spine is, open it up, fold one side, fold the other. And I'm just stacking them in the same piles. So I'm just flicking through my pages, making sure that I've got them in my stacks. And now I'm going to pull out my sewing machine and I'm actually going to sew these pages together. So you could just glue them together or you can stitch them, it's up to you. But essentially I'm just sewing along that little seam there to secure it. Um, sewing it also makes it a little bit more rigid and stable as well So if you do have a sewing machine and you would like to use it, then I would highly recommend But as I said a glue stick would also work fine or even um, The adhesive the the tape adhesive as well would work I've had a bit of trouble threading my um, my sewing machine of late so I 
I'm just re-threading my sewing machine whilst I do this. I tend to use a zigzag stitch when I do this um, just because I feel like it's a bit more um, decorative and a little bit more strong than the just the straight stitch um, but I really also like the texture that this adds as well. If you've got any rips in your pages as well you can kind of sew those up as well while you're doing this. So I just keep putting my pages back in my stacks, my two stacks, and just checking that it's all going together properly. So you should have three and three. And what I'm doing is just binder clipping those two stacks together so that I know that they go together within the book. Now I'm pulling out some scrapbook paper and I'm just going to choose different colours and different patterns that I kind of like for this um, set. I tend to have a box that I've kind of pre-cut a whole heap of pages as well so I do dive into that as well. Um, but first off I go through the scrapbook paper because that's kind of the biggest component. These scrapbook pads all came from Spotlight. I really love this Maggie Holmes one. It was on clearance, so I'm really sad that I won't be able to get my hands on it, I don't think, anymore. Um, and then the other ones are DCWV, which I really, really love their paper. It's nice and thick. So this is a standard page I normally use. So it's 26 across by about 19 tall, and then it's folded over. So I'm just pulling out my um, paper trimmer again and I'm just grabbing like bunches at a time I'm cutting off the the branding strip at the top and then chopping it down and then I only have a little bit of overhang and I tend to use the bottom part as well as a short page in the journal as well you can always always use your off cuts as well to make tags or different little journaling spots this one I'm actually not cutting that extra bit off and I'm just folding it up and making a little pocket and you can either sew those seams up on the side or you can just glue it down. This one I'm folding into three by the looks of. So I've got a little like flap and then doing the same with the off cut. So I feel like using different um, folding techniques and different size papers really kind of gives the pages interest. So I always make a habit of just making a whole heap of different size pages. As I said, I've got a massive box of just cut papers that are already folded ready to go. So a lot of the time I dig into that. Um, but if you're making just one of these, just pull out enough pages for you to, um, to go through the process. I also at the moment have kits on my website that you can um, shop from the link down below. And it has a great starting point of different scrapbook papers and recycled papers, the little garden book, all the different little findings that you see me using. Um, it comes with an awl and some thread as well um, and it will give you a really good base to start with um, to start setting up your little golden book and make your own if you would like to do that. So we've got another pocket page here. Oh, we're actually cutting it down halfway and it's going to flip up. There we go. So I find using similar collections of pages um, from the same sort of scrapbook pad helps because the papers naturally coordinate anyway, um, if you are that way inclined. but. I also like um, mixing it up. So at the moment I've just got my um, envelope punch board and I've cut a square 24 centimeters. I'm just going through the motions of making some 
large envelopes uh, because I like to put them in the middle of the signature to cover up my stitching. If you don't have an envelope punch board, you don't have to use envelopes. Um, I just find it's a really cool way to tuck things in. So I use a lot of double-sided scrapbook paper. As I said, die cuts with a view is probably my favorite um, paper brand, um, just because they are so thick and the patterns that they have are beautiful. So I use a lot of double-sided, but you can also use single-sided scrapbook paper. As I said too, it's really cool to use different kind of weights and thicknesses um, to get that kind of different texture throughout the journal. So I'm cutting an awful amount of pages for this journal. This journal was actually a giveaway swap that I did with a uh, group um, and we used a whole heap of different techniques. So I'm probably cutting too many pages at this point and I'll probably end up saving some for a new journal that I'll be creating soon. All right, I'm just pulling out, I've got these massive ledger book um, that I've got from the mill market in Ballarat, I believe. Uh, which is like a vintage shop and I'm just pulling out a few pages of the ledger there. Ledger is super hard to find in Australia, I don't know why or it might just be where I am um, but I only found the first three ledger books ever um, at one particular vintage shop um, so I'm just using some of that here so I'm just trimming that down. I'm also pulling out some music paper, I find this regularly at op shops um, or thrift shops over in America is what you guys call them. So I'm just chopping that down to fit the sort of um, same page size and I'm not too fussed about if the pages are going the wrong way so I use that um, the opposite way. So now I'm just flicking through all the pages so I'm just showing you there's folded pages and I'm just sorting them into piles so that I know which ones are which. So there's my music, I've got some wallpaper, some new other children books, dictionary, coffee dye paper, brown paper, little paper bags, doilies, um, note paper, botanical pages, mailways, colouring books, just stationary paper and envelopes, all sorts of different things. So now is the fun bit where you uh, sort through all your pages and you start compiling your signatures. So for this book I made four signatures and what I'm doing here is I'm making the first signature and I'm making sure I include the three pages from the actual little golden book within this. So I believe I do about 10 to 12 pages per signature, um, but it's totally up to you how many signatures you pop in there. Obviously, the more signatures you put in, the more stitching you have to do. Um, but the more signatures you put in, it also spreads out the pages as well, so it doesn't kind of buckle as much. My default is about four signatures um, and about eight to 12 pages, depending. So I've put my, uh, my second signature together, as you can see, and that was all just paper out of that bin. And now I'm putting my third signature together, which has the pages from the little golden book put back in as well. So I'm just alternating. The first signature has the book pages, the second one doesn't, the third signature does, and then the last one won't. And I'm just trying to mix it up. Sometimes I have a method and I kind of like write it down where I'm like, right, I'm going to put a scrapbook paper in, then a wallpaper, then a ledger, then this, then that. Um, but I'm just kind of playing around with how I like it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually flip through the, the book without it being stitched. I'm just going to check that I like the way that everything's sitting. So my style is very eclectic. I tend to not match things very often. Um, and I like to kind of vary things up a little bit. So I like to use different scrapbook pads and different colors within it. Awesome, so I'm happy with how my page is looking. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna see where I can put these scraps. So these are all just scraps from where I've chopped my pages down. And I'm using these strips here as little belly bands. So I'm just chopping them down to the sides of the page. And what I'll do is I'll stitch top and bottom so that you can slide things underneath. Now with the bigger pages that I didn't 
chop down. I'm going to just chop them down into kind of squarer um, formats and I'm actually going to use those as little journaling cards or little things to tuck into pages. Um, so the person can actually just use that as well um, to write on. These ones I'm actually making into pockets so I'm just using the envelope punch board has a little rounded corner punch which is what I'm using here and I'm just using that to put some pockets in and I'll stitch those. This is a bit of wallpaper trim that I'm just making a little kind of pocket with. And then I'm pulling out the sewing machine again. So again, you could just glue these down if you didn't have a sewing machine or didn't want to use your sewing machine. Um, as I said, I really like using my sewing machine on paper, so I'm doing that quite often. So this is a little pocket that I'm going to put on the edge of this page and I'm just going to sew around the straight edges. So I'm just going to sew two sides of it and then it's going to be like a little pocket you can slide things into. While I'm doing this, I'm also stitching up any of the pages that I've made into a pocket where I cut the page and then folded it um, just so that I'm cleaning up any of that as well. So here's the wallpaper um, trim and I've just sewed three sides on that so that it all kind of sews into a really shallow pocket and here's the belly band where I'm sewing just top and bottom so that the middle is open. Also got an envelope here that I'm just sewing to a page, another little scrapbook pocket. I'm just trying to disperse them throughout the book as well so that there's not too many in the one kind of signature. What I'm doing here is I'm just trimming off some of the excess um, fabric that I had from the spine and just grabbing a few more bits from my stash. I'm also grabbing some lace trim and different materials um, to put on the edges of my pages so that um, there's a bit of a textural kind of element to the pages. So sometimes I'll use just a big strip of lace um, just to kind of line the, ver the whole edge of the page and other times I'll just use a little tiny scrap of fabric and I'll just fold it over almost like a little tab. Um, so depending on what you want to do you can use big strips of fabric. You can also do ruffles as well on the sewing machine. And if you're not using the sewing machine, you could just fold those tabs over and just staple them onto the page as well. It gives you a really cool texture when you kind of look at the, the journal from the side as well. And again, I'm not coordinating any of these fabrics. I've just got a massive box of just off cuts that I dive into when I start doing tabs. So I have just pulled that out and just grabbed a handful of different things. So you can see on my desk there, I've got some little pieces of lace as well. Um, lots of fabric comes from the op shop and also the lace trim I most of the time buy from the op shop as well, um, which is really, really affordable. So I would encourage you if you would like to start making little golden books or just journals in general, um, to be having a look at your op shops and having a go at trying to find some reused and recycled um, materials. So what I'm doing here too is I'm actually putting the pages back into the signature where I, where I found them and just kind of having a look at the signature so that I'm dispersing all the fabric kind of evenly so that I don't have all the tabs right at the very top. Okay, so it's time to start making our templates to get our signatures stitched into our cover. So I'm just using a piece of scrap um, cardboard that I had lying around from old packaging. And I'm just drawing out two spines exactly the same as what we did before. So 20 centimeters by five centimeters. I'm just gonna cut that out. We're just gonna use these as little guides to where we need to put our holes in our spine and in our signatures as well. So really important with these that you do label one side of them the top because it is going to matter um, and your pages won't line up. So what I'm doing here is I'm just uh, rolling out a line top and bottom for my starting points. And then what I'm doing is just making sure that all of my lines are straight because I have a tendency of doing wonky lines. And then I'm marking out five holes that I'm going to put. So I actually put mine at three centimeters, six centimeters, 10 centimeters, 14 and 18. 
I'm doing that on either side and then I'm just going to rule a line across and that is going to indicate where our holes are. So because I'm doing a five pamphlet stitch, I've got five holes and then I'm doing the same thing on this template, but I'm only doing one line because this is going to be just our template for our signature. So on our um, spine template, we're going to poke the holes through just where the cross sections are. So I'm just going down with my awl and just very carefully poking a hole through each of those little cross sections. So now what I'm doing is just lining up my other template on top and just using that as a guide to put my holes for my other template that I'll use for my pages. So I'm just marking those out now. And then I'm just using my awl to poke some holes through that again as well. I'm just going to fold that and I'm going to use my bone, bone folder to just make that crease nice and sharp. And this is because we're going to put that in the, um, the crease of your pages. Coffee break. Okay, so I've got my wax linen thread out. Um, you want to use wax linen thread because it gives you a little bit more um, flexibility and it's a, a really strong thread and it won't kind of snap on you so that's why I use that and I'm using my awl and I've just bind a clip to my template to the, the front of the spine and what I'm doing is just very carefully using the template and just poking my awl through each of those holes and just kind of giving it a bit of a wiggle. Now it will be kind of difficult because there is two layers of chipboard there um, so just be careful not to get your fingers um, but just yeah be patient and just poke every single hole and I find using two binder clips to secure that in place while I'm doing the template is really handy. So I've got my holes and at this point I've got my crocodile out I'm just going to put a little hanging um, little hook just to put a charm off if I want to. So I've got that there and it's just a little split pin. So I've just made a hole and then put the split pin in. I find it easier to do it now than to do it while the pages are stitched in. All right, so now I've got some more binder clips out and I'm gonna start doing the signatures. So what I'm doing here is I'm checking that all my pages are lining up and they're the right way up. And I just binder clip each side and then I hold my template in place and kind of fold it into the, the middle of the fold. And just really gently, I just kind of push through all the holes. So again, just checking all my pages. And then binder clipping it in place so that they don't move. And then using my awl to poke the holes. And making sure you put them up the right way when you are um, poking the holes and then popping them on top of your book because I have had to um, to take some stitching out and rebind things because I accidentally put them up the wrong way. So again, binder clips, one either side, hold all the pages together. Really kind of jam that template in the, in the crevice in the middle there and just poke through. The more pages you have per signature, the harder this will be. I use the binder clips too because um, when you're stitching the pages in it's a little bit easier um, to try and find where the holes are um, and don't have the loose pages kind of flying around all over the place. I've learned from the mistakes I made early on. Alright so I've put all my holes in my spine and then in my book. So I'm getting some wax linen thread and you need about double the size and I'm just using a needle here. I think they're yarn needles. And what I'm going to do is go through the middle hole, out through the spine, and then you go in through the next hole. It doesn't matter if you go top or bottom. Then out through the bottom hole. And then through that hole again, the second hole from the bottom. And then you go up past the middle hole to the next hole and out through. Then in through the spine, through the pages, then back through that second top hole, and then back through the middle hole. Now the key here is to make sure that the 
um, wax linen thread goes either side of your binding um, so that it tightens and what I do is I just go through and I just pull each of the little bits so that I know it's tight and then I tie it in a couple of knots and that is a five hole pamphlet stitch and my pages are secure so once I've got them secure I then just um, bind a clip the whole signature together so that they're not flapping about so again I'm just double checking that my pages are up the right way double the length of wax linen thread of your page through the middle up through the next hole out through the bottom hole back up through the second hole skip the middle hole and out through the top second top hole and then back through the top hole and then double back over that second hole and then back through the middle hole and make sure both uh, sides of the wax linen thread are on either side and then just pull to tighten gets a little bit of getting used to and the other thing that you need to make sure of is that you don't accidentally when going back through a hole that you've already been through um, to not put your needle through the wax linen thread that's already there because it won't tighten um, if you do that there's lots of tutorials on uh, YouTube as well about um, pamphlet stitches but it is fairly easy once you get the hang of it I've also done a three hole pamphlet stitch before which is really really simple so if you feel more comfortable doing it that way then you can do that I just find that the five hole is um, a little bit more secure for this size journal just going up through that second bottom hole then out through the second top hole then up through the top hole back through the second top hole and then back through the middle and sometimes it, it is a bit hard to try and find the holes in the signature so you just got to feel around sometimes I will flick through the pages and just very gently go one at a time um, and then I'm just tightening all my all my seams there And the great thing about putting envelopes in the middle of the signature is you get to hide all of the um, all of the stitching. Then I tend to flip the book around for the last signature because I find it a little bit easier. It's not as bulky. Um, the book just naturally wants to fall that way. So I'm also left-handed, so it kind of makes things a little bit difficult as well. So yeah, I use a, a quite a large needle. Um, that's just so that I can see it when I'm going through the pages. Um, and it's quite thick as well. I've just pierced the, um, the wax linen thread here, so I'm just trying to fix it up. And wax linen thread comes in so many different colors as well so it's, you can match it to the the color of your fabric or the color scheme that you're going for in your journal as well so again just checking that they're all tight and then tying it off and they just trim off any of the excess as well amazing our stitching is all done i'm just double checking to make sure i didn't stitch any in the opposite way and i'm just checking to see now when you actually have stitched these in, um, it will be kind of a little bit spread out and a bit bulky, but once the pages kind of settle and they, um, they sit together nicely. So just be patient with it. It will kind of all flatten itself out. But yeah, I'm just flicking through because sometimes occasionally, even though you've checked it multiple times, you might have like a loose page that just got missed when we were um, popping the holes in so you might need to just take those pages out um, if you miss the, the sewing which is no big deal at all awesome I'm super happy with that so now what I'm going to do is I've got some lace again and I'm just going to finish off the edge of this spine so what I've done is I've just measured out double the length of the cover times two I've got my hot glue gun out and I'm just going to hot glue gun the uh, lace on the edge there just of the raw fabric just to clean up that edge a little bit and I just do little bit by little bit and just kind of glue that down 
and then I'll, I'll open up the cover and then I'll just finish it off on the inside. That just gives the, the fabric a bit more of a finished edge. You could also use like pinking shears on your fabric and just um, clean that up that way um, so that it doesn't fray. I kind of like the, the little touch of lace or trim um, or whatever you might want to use. So I do that front and back. Just make sure it's dry before you shut it because otherwise you'll have hot glue all over your front cover. I like hot glue because it dries really quick but you could use tacky glue to glue this down as well. And again this lace is from the op shop or a thrift shop so lots of recycled stuff. The fabric on the spine as well is also from a op shop. So the other step I've got to get done in this journal is I've got to just glue my envelopes together so that they are shut to an extent. So this is an ATG gun. It's just a really fancy um, dispenser for double-sided tape. So you could glue these with a glue stick, you could use double-sided tape, whatever it might be. Now what I'm doing is actually making a tassel. So I've got a heap of fibers here. So I've got some lace, I've got um, some yarn, some chul, and now I'm just cutting some wax linen thread as well. And I'm just just eyeballing a length and just layering all that together so the wax linen thread will take like um, buttons and charms and stuff whereas the others will just be more of a textural thing so I'm just stacking that all together I've got a little jump ring here and I'm going to use my jewelry pliers to kind of open that jump ring up and just squish everything in and then put it through my little eyelet on my book now this can be kind of tricky if you use really, really thick materials, um, but you'll get there. And then what I'm doing is just closing the jump ring. And I tend to like to have the closure on the bottom, if that makes sense. Um, so that when I make it into a tassel, and there's no chance of it coming undone. And what I've done is just cut a, another length of wax linen thread and I'm just making the head of the tassel. So I've just grabbed a little bit and then just wrapped it around the top a couple of times and then tied it off. And then I've got my tassel. So you could leave it here or you can do what I'm going to do here and pulling out all my wax linen thread uh, threads and now I'm just going through and just collecting up some little bits and pieces to tie on. So I've got a domino piece here and I'm just using a, um, a little hand screwdriver kind of thing just to make a hole and then I've got a little eyelet pin that I'm going to E6000 um, into the top of it to make it a charm. So I do this quite often with um, Monopoly pieces and different game pieces and stuff. And I've got some buttons, uh, some vintage buttons, some beads, um, little charms, a key, an old key. Um, so whatever you can find, lots of little different bits and pieces. It just gives another element of textile and um, like a tactile feel. And all I'm doing, I've got some seed beads there as well. All I'm doing is just tying them at random different lengths. Um, to kind of sit within the within the tassel. And just double knotting everything just to make sure that it doesn't fall off. Again, you could also put this on like a like an alligator clip kind of thing or a clasp so that it's removable. Um, I just normally do them just straight onto the book, but you can remove it if you really wanted to. I'm just digging through sometimes I coordinate the tassels to the covers sometimes I don't just depends on what I'm feeling that day um, this one I was doing kind of like a, a really random kind of color pattern with the buttons and stuff but I wanted to do like blues because there was like obviously a lot of blue in the cover um, so yeah I'm just going through and picking some cool buttons again I pick these up at op shops all the time or the other place I really like to get supplies is Campbellwell Market um, in Melbourne
and I tend to tie the heavier things at the bottom. So you can see the domino and the key is at the bottom. So there's my tassel all done. And then I'm gonna make a little book charm. So this is something that I do a lot for my journals. I've just got this little tiny piece of MDF and I've just printed out a front cover and a back cover. Um, you can find these on Google Images or you can find them. You could take a photo of them before you start making them into journals. Um, but I've just cut them to size and then I've got a bit of Mod Podge and a paintbrush. And I'm just gonna paint Mod Podge on one side and then stick the cover on and then paint over the top and that kind of seals it in. You can also do this with PVA glue as well. Um, and then I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna do the back. So it's almost like this little tiny version of a little golden book, which I kind of find really cute um, as a tassel. Also helps me when I'm at markets because um, if I have my books sitting spine out um, like a bookshelf, people can kind of look at the, the little charm and work out what book it is. So I'm just letting that dry and just make sure you clean up your Mod Podge straight away because it will dry very quickly. And then I've just got my crocodile out again, which is like an industrial hole punch. Punched a little hole and then using some wax linen thread, just tying that charm on. All right, I've got a box here with all different types of things that I've made to fill the pockets. So I've got different tickets, some little die cuts that I've cut, um, tags that I've made, library pocket, uh, Monopoly money, different playing cards. Um, we've got journaling cards that I've made and also bought, uh, little paper clips, little um, tassels and stuff on safety pins. So I've just got that whole collection there and I'm just going to go through and I'm going to fill up my pages. So a lot of the times with my journals, I like to um, just paper clip things in or just tuck them into pockets and not actually stick them in permanently because I like to have the freedom uh, for other people to move things around so a lot of my journals are really customizable so you can see here I've got like some things that I'm just tucking into pockets um, that's like a tea dyed um, flash card with a stamp I've used some of my fabric to just make a little paper clip I'm just chopping off the end of this paper bag so that I can use both sides of it. I'm just going through and finding what I want to use. So there's some journaling cards going in there. Um, different die cuts and little lace doilies are really fun. That's just some scrapbook paper I cut down to size that you could use as a journaling card. And then there's just a note card going in. Some more scrapbook paper. I tend to use... Um, little paper clips and I sometimes thread like buttons or different little charms on them to make them kind of a little bit more funky. More journaling cards, a little bit of Monopoly money sometimes is cute as well. Um, just depends on what you have as well. I have lots of um, die cuts because I use all of my scrap papers that I don't use as pages. I will um, cut little die cuts on my die cut machine. So I like sharing those with people as well. Here's some tags. One of them is bought. The other ones are made with just some scrapbook paper. This is a die cut as well. It's like a little frame. I think it's a Kayser Craft um, die cut. And then there was just a flash card that kind of worked really nicely that went in there. This is a little uh, bulb safety pin that I've just put a little tassel on and then just clipping them onto the, to the tabs to add another textural element. And again, tucking lots of different things into pockets and stuff. I find that... Um, when people flick through my journals they get really excited about finding the little bits and pieces hidden within the journal occasionally I will just put this in one big envelope at the back of the journal um, so that it doesn't fall out but for this particular one it was being sent off to a uh, swap so I was just popping them throughout the throughout the journal so as I said um, before I have journaling kits on my website that you can purchase and they come with a basic kit of things. Um, they have like little envelopes like this and tags and all sorts of things. So if you would like to make one for your own sake, you can either just use the things that come with, or you can add, if, you, if you're a bit of a journaler yourself, you can add some extra scrapbook paper or whatever paper you might have. It's really, really customizable. Um, and you can use this video as like a bit of a um, instruction guide. 
but with junk journals there's no really right or wrong reason it's just your creative freedom um, which is kind of really fun so there is no set way to do anything um, this is just my way of making journals but there is lots and lots of videos on YouTube of really really cool makers that make things very very differently so I would encourage you to have a look around too and see which style you like the most Got some handmade tags there. This is some flashcards I got at the op shop. A little Rolodex card. And I just, I sometimes just flick through and then I end up flicking back through pages and seeing what works. And as I said, the fun thing about this is that everything's removable and the owner can then move those things around. It may not even be that they want to use these bits in their journal that um, they receive from me. They may want to use them in a different journal or even a different project. So giving them lots of different options to move those things around is really important, I think, as well. It's just a little um, card from a botanical book. Got a couple more scrapbook papers going in. I just like to fill those pockets up. I've got some tickets and there's a little uh, slide, film slide there. I've got a collection of those. So I find too that it's helpful to have just a container of um, all of these things just onto the side of my desk so that I can then um, fill all the pockets up when I'm ready. Just adding some final charms to my, my little tabs. rearranging my little paper clips at the top there. And there is our finished journal. So let's have a bit of a flip through and we can have a look. So we've got our tassel with all our different fabrics and our little book charm. fabric paper clips at the top there and then all of our fabric tabs on the side with all of our different buttons and charms and things hanging off. So the first page I like to normally put like a library card and then the second page I normally use the book page and as you can see lots of different papers, different size papers, and I like things hanging out of pockets. That one's just a piece of fabric that I sewed to an extra page. There's our envelope with all of our little goodies in it. And doing the, the book pages this way ensures that if the person did want to read the book, um, they could do that. Some coffee dye. Music pages. There's that beautiful scrapbook paper. There's one of our pockets with some scrapbook paper and a note card. There's a beautiful doily there. Lots of different things on this page with a handmade tag. There's that dictionary page. There's a little photo map card with some tickets on the back. And we've got another envelope there with some goodies. There's our little belly band with a few things tucked in. We've got some cards up the top there. Another pocket with some things. There's that ledger paper we cut down before. Flip up. 
is another envelope with some things popped in. Homemade tag. Some die cut tickets, so these are from Tim Holtz. That wallpaper trim that we turned into a pocket. There's a little handmade envelope up the top there. Some more ledger paper, and this is a wallpaper. A little belly band on the side. This is an Australia Post envelope with some things popped in. Some more hand painted tags. printed um, and stamped tags there and that is the end of our our little journal so I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial or long tutorial um, and if you have any questions pop them down in the comments below and I look forward to seeing what you guys create with the ideas that I've given you in this little tutorial